Okay, today we are talking negative exponents. We've got three examples where we're going to be using a numerator and a denominator to work with a negative exponent or power up there on the side. Just quickly, let's take a quick look at the exponent law up here. When we have a base of a to the power of a negative exponent, such as negative m, that's going to be equivalent. It's the same as one over that base a to that power or exponent of m. So let's do an example now so we can gain more clarity into this. So here we go. We have a numerator and a denominator on this example. We have 1 over 3y squared. Now that's all to the power of a negative 2. So there are many ways we can go about doing this. But first off, what I'd like to do is write it down in such a way where we make that exponent positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as so. I'm going to write down 1 over, over 1 over 3 y to the power of 2 squared and the whole thing to the power of positive 2. Now we change it to a positive 2. Why? Because we flipped it or the word is we got the reciprocal of this original question up here in black. Now notice again, you can see this the negative power, negative exponent there turns into a positive power as soon as it goes down there on the denominator as this example here, it's going to be positive. So what's the next step? Well, when we got this divided by that, in other words, what we're talking about is y divided by 1 over 3y all squared like that, all squared. Now what happens is when that is divided by that, it's essentially what you're doing is you're flipping it and multiplying. You remember that from fractions. So we're going to flip it multiplied by the reciprocal 3y squared, that's over 1 squared. So you're just flipping it essentially. So as we do that, that means what's going to happen here, this equals essentially 3y squared all squared or 3y squared over 1. We don't need to put the 1, we know how we got that. Okay, so now how let's further simplify this is another exponent law where that power, that 2 there, affects the 3. So essentially let me write another color there. It becomes over here that affects that and that affects that. So that becomes 3 squared y to the power of 4 or 2 times 2. You can see 2 times 2 there. So let's further uh, expand this. So that's going to be 3 threes are 9. So our answer for this example is 9 y to the 4. Okay, let's try another example to get a clearer perspective on this particular thing here. We've got another numerator and denominator here. It's 9 over 7x, the whole thing to the power of negative 2. We've got a lot of negatives here. So how can we further enhance our understanding of this? Well, essentially what we're saying here is that because that's negative, I can put one over that or go directly and just flip it upside down, which is what we got down here in the previous example, if you can see that. So that negative essentially means reciprocator. So let's do that now. So we're going to cut to the chase and go straight for the reciprocation. 7x all over 9. Let's put the brackets around that. All to the power of what? Positive 2. Positive 2. So that is flipped. There you go there. So now all we have to do is apply that positive 2 or that power of 2 to the 7, to the x, and to the 9. So in other words, everything on the numerator, everything on the denominator. So that's going to equal 7 squared x squared all over 9 squared. And as we further simplify this, 7 squared we all know is going to be 49 x squared all over 9 squared, which is... 81. Okay, that's our second example. Let's go to the third one. The third one's a little bit complex, maybe a little bit puzzling when you first see it, but uh, as we do it, it'll make a lot of sense for you and it'll help you really grasp this topic of negative exponents. So on the numerator, we have x times x squared, y to the power of negative 2, that's on the numerator 
all to the power of 3. And down below in the denominator, we have 2x to the power of negative 1, y to the power of 3, the whole thing all squared. So we're asked to simplify this. And one of the best ways we can do this is firstly applying those major exponents on the outside of the brackets to each individual item with inside the bracket. So let's do that first of all. So let's take that 3 and go inwards. So that 3 is going to affect the 10. So that's going to be 10 x to the power of, let me just change colors for the x, x to the power of 2 times 3. And then we're going to have y. Let me just change colors with that one too. y to the power of negative 2 times 3. Now that's all going to be over the denominator. Now up here, the 3, we're going to apply it to the 10. So let's do that in black. There we go. Now each single part has been applied. Let's take that 2, the exponent, and apply it to each item in the denominator. So let's do that 2 times 2. So that'll be 2 squared. And then we have the x, and that's going to be 2 times negative 1. So that's x, 2 times negative 1. And then finally with the y here, we have y to the power of 3 times 2. So as we further simplify this, the numerator will look like this. It'll be 1,000 because 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. And then the x, 2 times 3 is x to the power of 6, and then the y is going to be y to the power of negative 6, like that. And then that's all over. 4, 2 twos are 4. Then we have x to the power of negative 2, and then we have y to the power of positive 6. Now what we've got to do is work with the exponents of each component so we can work out the actual answer. So let's have a look here how we're going to do this. Well, we've got 1000x to the 6 over 4x to the minus 2. Let's work with the x's here. The x to the 6 divided by x to the power of negative 2. Let me just do it here on the side. So x to the 6 divided by x to the minus 2. Well, when we have exponents, uh, these type of exponents, and we have the same base, what do you do with the powers when you're dividing? The powers will subtract when you're dividing with the same base. So let's do that now. So that's going to be the power of 6 minus minus 2, which means we're going to get a positive, aren't we? So 6 minus minus 2 is going to be 6 plus 2, which is 8. So that means we're going to get x to the power of 8. So the x's are going to end up at x to the power of 8. What's going to happen with the y's? Well, the same thing's happening with the y's. We've got y to the power of negative 6 divided by y to the power of positive 6. Now, when we're dividing the same bases again, we subtract the powers, don't we? So it's negative 6 subtract 6. So that's going to end up a lot of negatives there, negative 12. So that's going to be y to the power of negative 12. Okay, so we've got that part, we've got the y's, we've got the x's. Now the numbers, they're 100 divided by 4 is 250. So that means the answer is going to be 250. That's the black part. Let's go for the x's. x to the power of 8. x to the power of 8. And that's going to be all over because we've got y to the power of negative 12. Now we can write right over here next to it, y negative 12, or alternatively, we can write the y positive 12 on the denominator. I'm going to write in the denominator like this. So it's going to be y to the negative, sorry, that's going to be positive there, because it's on the denominator, positive 12. y to the positive 12. And that is our answer.